Well, hello, and welcome to my latest video. And it's movie review time. Yes, Barbie. Uh, written uh, by Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach. Directed by Greta Gerwig and starring Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling and Will Ferrell. What's it like? Is it any good? Should you spend your money? Well, stick around and you'll find out. Now, the first thing I need to say is if you've watched uh, my previous video, you will not be surprised to learn uh, that I went to see Barbie uh, on my own. My favourite movie buddies no longer being around. And you're going to say you're a 67-year-old man. You went to see Barbie. Well, are you mad? Well, actually, I rather enjoyed it. And oddly enough, the vast majority of the audience, as far as I could tell, were people of a similar age to myself. So go figure if you can. Anyway, what can I say about Barbie? Well, the first thing that I want to say is that the opening scene is a parody of the start of 2001. Now, I was thinking 2001, A Space Odyssey, came out in, what, 1968? Now, I, I was 12 years old in 1968, as I'm now uh, 67. So, OK, I've seen 2001. It's been on telly a few times, but the vast majority of the audience surely would not understand the reference to 2001. Does that matter? Well, probably not. But it is a very clever and it is a very funny parody of the opening scene of 2001 because it shows a group of children playing with dolls and the voiceover from Helen Mirren makes clear that dolls in those days were invariably babies and then Barbie appears on the scene like the great monolith in 2001, uh, rather fetchingly dressed in a swimsuit, winks at the girls, and here is the first doll that is an adult, is Barbie an adult? And therefore all the children smash all their dolls, and then they go up into the air. They don't turn into a space station, they turn into Barbie land, where Barbie lives in this idealised plastic world with all the other Barbies. Now, there are um, Barbies of different colours and ethnic backgrounds, but there's also a couple of fat Barbies. Now, I or I suppose I ought to say plus side Barbie, a plus size Barbie, curvy Barbies. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm, I call them fat, actually, morbidly obese, you might call them. And I don't remember. It's going back a long way when I had Barbies, actually. No, my daughter had Barbies. But I don't remember a fat Barbie. If I'm wrong about that, then leave a comment down below. But I don't remember. So uh, Barbie lives in Barbie land and she lives in a Barbie house with all the Barbie stuff. And if you remember your Barbies, as I'm sure you do, uh, when she drinks from a carton, nothing comes out because it was just a little plastic carton, wasn't it? When she has a shower, no water comes out because it wasn't any real water in Barbie land. And when she takes off her shoes, she's still standing on tippy toes because, of course, Barbie had uh, high high heels and high feet. She didn't have uh, flat feet and flat shoes. And she drives around in her Barbie car and on her Barbie jet ski and so on and so forth. And she has girls, girls, night in with all her Barbie friends. And then there is Ken and the rest of the boys. And they only exist in Barbie's eyes because they are purely appendages, if you pardon that expression for Barbie and her friends. Now, be, due to... um. Uh, a sequence of events, Barbie starts to notice uh, different things going on. In other words, her feet become flat and she starts to cry and she starts to think about death. So it turns out, because she goes to meet this other kind of weird Barbie, they call her, who says to her, well, someone in the real world is playing with you and messing with your head, and this is the cause of your problem. So Barbie decides to escape from Barbie land into the real world and find out what is going on, and Ken, of course, accompanies her. And this is really cleverly done, actually, because uh, you see Barbie and Ken in the Barbie car, and then you see them uh, in the Barbie on the Barbie jet ski and on the Barbie tandem bike and in the Barbie camper van, and of of course, they are all the Barbie models, but life-sized to accommodate, obviously, uh, Margot Robbie and, and Ryan Gosling. Anyway, they get into the real world and they have a series of adventures. They meet up with Will Ferrell, who's the boss of Mattel, and uh, then they end up escaping back to Barbie land and there's a big fight between all the Kens and so on and so forth. Now, 
I'm not necessarily explaining it particularly well, but the few things that I want to say about the film are not really about the story itself. First of all, it is funny, okay? There are some very funny sequences, all right? Secondly, there are bits in it that are actually quite boring. Thirdly, Will Ferrell and the real people, if you like, as opposed to the Barbie people, Barbie and Ken and the other Barbies and so on and so forth, I, I didn't really feel that they worked for some reason. There was something about taking Barbie out of Barbie land and putting her into the real world, which I know is the whole point of the story, but it kind of, I don't know. And it was like they needed Will Ferrell to be in this film. We always find a rather irritating actor, and I didn't think he added anything to it. And he wasn't funny. He didn't have any funny lines, whereas the rest of the film is actually quite funny. Now, one of the points that Barbie makes, of course, is that, and when she gets into the real world, this becomes not so much obvious, but it's picked up on that she doesn't have a vagina. And uh, Ken, of course, doesn't have a penis because they are plastic dolls, in case you hadn't realised that. So they get back into Barbie land, and while they're gone, the Kens, i.e. the men, have taken over because in the real world, it's all about the patriarchy. The men are in charge and the women are subservient and the women don't have any power and they're just there to serve the men and so on and so forth. So when they get back into Barbie land, they find that Ken has replicated what he discovered in the real world. So now the men are in charge and all the Barbies, the girls, the women, if you like, are waiting on them and serving them food and drinks and they have to have the Godfather and Schindler's List and Shawshank Redemption, etc. explained to them because they don't understand those difficult concept films. And so Barbie and her friends, and there's a mother and a daughter who come back with them, stay with me, stay with me, uh, decide that they need to change this situation. They need to deprogram the Barbies from being these subservient women and get them back to being the powerful women that they were in Barbie land before the interaction with the real world. Does that make sense? So they do that in all the quick sequence. And then they organize a big fight between all the Kens who fight together in a scene that I actually thought was rather boring and turns into a kind of 1930s Diana Durbin dance sequence for reasons that I didn't quite understand. And then Barbie meets the originator or the inventor of Barbie, who's played by Maya Palman, if you remember her Cheers, and I've not seen her in a film or on TV since then, and decides to go back into the real world. So she has to make this choice. Does she stay in Barbie land? Or does she go back to the real world? And Barbie, spoiler alert, I'm afraid, decides to go back to the real world because that is where she sees that life is real as opposed to being artificial in Barbie land. Now, a couple of points. Uh, first of all, and this is a key point to me, and I'm going to touch on uh, what could be a fairly sensitive uh, or delicate topic. And that is at the end of the film, Barbie's gone back to the real world. And the first place that she goes to visit is a gynecologist. Okay, And then the film ends. Now, I want to know what is the film telling us there? Is it telling us that Barbie wants to get a vagina created? And when she gets a vagina created, does she also get a clitoris created? In other words, this is this about... Barbie and the apotheosis of feminism that she can now embrace her own sexuality without a man? Or is it about Barbie getting a vagina and so she can join in with the men? Now that is not explained. I also wasn't entirely sure. Are they making a transphobic reference? Are they saying that you can only be a woman if you've got an actual vagina? Or are they saying it's a trans positive uh, reference because if you get a vagina created, then you are a real woman. I'm not getting into the whole trans argument. That is not what this review is about. But I thought it was interesting that the film touched on that particular subject. So it is something that I wanted to delve deeper into, but you may think it's a rather tasteless subject talking about Margot Robbie's clitoris and her vagina, but I did not start this conversation. That was started by Greta Gerwig in this particular film. Now, what happens, of course, when Barbie goes back, or rather when Barbie goes into the real world, 
all the other Barbies are left behind and Ken is left behind. And Ken is left behind forevermore to wander through this Barbie world um, inhabited by these unfeasonably attractive women. And he has no penis. He is penisless. He is bollockless. And therefore he is, will spend his days prostrate on a mink coat with no prostate to service his particular needs and no wick to dip and nowhere to dip it. Well, if that is not the fate of every divorced man or even every married man in the real world, then I don't know what is. So the thing about the film, which I thought was um, interesting, is that it deals with interesting topics. It poses interesting questions about uh, the real world and about the patriarchy and the role of women. But is that interesting to the kind of young girls and would have thought it's principally girls who are going to go and see this film? Are they going to say, mummy, what's a gynecologist? Are they going to say, mummy, what's a vagina? Are they going to say, mummy, what's a patriarchy? Or are all these children, do they learn all this at school now? I mean, I didn't. I didn't learn this at school. I didn't know what a vagina was until I was 42. And I didn't know what a patriarchy was until I became boss of my own company. I mean, Go figure. So I think for young people, they will struggle with this film because lots of it won't make a great deal of sense. Adults, people of 67 years old, such as myself, they can enjoy it because it's an enjoyable film. It's a fun film. It's a little bit weird in places, but it is beautifully done. The colours pop and burst on the screen. The Barbie um, accoutrements, the clothing is perfect. The, um, the cars and the vehicles and the jet skis and the houses and everything else is absolutely perfect. And the waves, the waves are plastic and the land is plastic and the pond is plastic. Everything is plastic because in Barbie land, everything is plastic. And in the real world, um, the, I suppose the real world is like the real world. It's, it's, it's not really all that interesting. It's not that badly done. There is a great sequence where they're skating along in those really bright yellow roller skates that Barbie and Ken used to have. You used to remember that. And Ken is dressed like a cowboy and, and Barbie is dressed in this kind of blue and pink sparkly outfits and they're on the boardwalk in uh, San Francisco or whatever it is and everybody's staring at them. I would have thought, actually, they wouldn't have stood out at all on the boardwalk in San Francisco, but perhaps I'm wrong about that. So the last thing I want to say is Margot Robbie is a brilliant actress, okay, and she is really, really good in this film, and she is beautiful, I will say that, but there is one thing, or I could say there are two things, and that is one of the key points about the real Barbie, by which I mean the doll Barbie, is that she had anatomically completely out of proportion, unfeasonably large breasts, and Margot Robbie does not now, whether the filmmakers are making a point about that or whether they thought, well, we want Margot Robbie small-breasted or not, and people will overlook that point, well, they didn't bargain with Pensioner Jules, who's not going to miss that particular point. Ryan Gosling, yeah, yeah, yeah he's very good. I, I thought, uh, in a way, his role is too big. Uh, and that could, if you like, go back to the patriarchy bit. He's supposed to just be a kind of an accoutrement, an appendage, another item of clothing that Barbie pull, brings, uh, puts on or takes off again. But his role is quite built up in this film. And is that because it's Ryan Gosling? Yeah, he's reasonably attractive and a kind of white-haired Billy Idol kind of look. Um, so what did I think of the film at the end? Um, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I had a good laugh. I thought it was fun. I thought there were some longers in the middle of it. I dragged a little bit. I thought there was too much stuff about the patriarchy. Okay, I mean, we get it. Men are in charge. You know, women have no power. You know, life is grim, blah, blah, blah. Uh, feminism is good, etc., etc. You know, wouldn't it be great to have a vagina? Well, wouldn't it be great to have a vagina, lady? Because is that final scene, is it really about self-abuse? Is it really about 
Margot Robbie going to a gynecologist to have a vagina and a clitoris built so she can masturbate for her heart's content in the real world. <laughs> now, you remember when Peter Cook and Dudley Moore used to do this skit about the worst job in the world? Well, I can think of what might be the best job in the world, and that is constructing a vagina and a clitoris. And I don't know whether the vagina includes the clitoris, and you'll leave a comment down below if I'm a little bit ignorant on that subject for reasons that you will sure to understand. But if there is a job going for a gynecologist, untrained, unqualified, to build Margot Robbie and clitoris, then please, please let me have that job. So, Barbie, go and see it. Yeah, why not? You'll have a laugh. You'll enjoy it. Dress in pink like I did. Embrace your inner barbie And poor old Ken, poor old Ken, left at the end without a dick to call his name. So, yeah, I liked it. Go and see it. You'll have a laugh. Thanks for watching. See you next time.